Hello friends, welcome to another video. Uh, today's video is based on a question posted on Power BI community forum. Actually, it's a very uh, common question. I've seen it in the past as well. Uh, and the purpose of this video is to just to showcase um, certain techniques we can use um, in DAX uh, to achieve the result. Uh, do watch this video until end because I have posted a question or going to ask a question in this video so that you guys can practice um, by yourself and to understand uh, how all this DAX works. And again, make sure to subscribe my channel. Uh, no more videos are on my channel and uh, uh, no more is in the pipeline. Um, uh, let's let's look at the Power BI and the question and then uh, then then the solution. The question here is was asked on Power BI community forum that I have a project which has a start and end date, very common scenario, and uh, there's a project amount. Um, so each project, like a project first uh, one, is starting in January first, finishing on August first, and the total amount is thirty thousand dollar. And the question is like I want to see the revenue by month. Um, so what does that mean is, for example, if I select a month of a March, for example, 2023, what will be my revenue? And, and the way uh, in this particular example, um, the user asked to calculate the revenue is, um, get the number of days between two dates, start and end date, let's say it turns out to be 50 days, and uh, $30,000 is the total amount, so what is the per day revenue? So $30,000 divided by 50 days, the total number of days of project, so per day revenue is uh, $600, and then based on the date selected, or the period selected, uh, then calculate the revenue. So let's say if we selected March, in this particular case, and March has 31 days, and $600 is the revenue per day, $600 multiplied by 31 days will be the revenue for the selected period or for the month of March. Uh, theoretically, this looks is pretty simple, but one thing you have to consider is, uh, first we need to find out if we select a, a dates in the slicer, which projects fall within that dates, right? Because that's the most important part. Uh, part but let's say in this particular case, if I select January, the project two will not be included in that because it's starting in February, right? And uh, the second thing is uh, um, we also want to make sure uh, that we are not going over the total number of days of uh, the projects. For example, if I selected the full 2023 year, uh, we don't want to go uh, per day revenue is 30,000 divided by 50, for example, in first case is $600. And because the total number are 50, and if we selected the full year, that doesn't mean we are going to multiply with 365 days because the maximum number of days for that project is um, only 50 days. So these are the two things which we need to uh, be uh, put into our solution. So which products are included and how many number of days relevant uh, revenue we need to calculate. Um, uh, for example, if I select August 1st to August 15 and uh, and for the project number one, it will only get calculated the revenue for one day because it is finishing on August 1st. So we can't go uh, all 15 days for that particular project. So. Uh, a few things around it, and um, that's that's what we need to consider. Uh, what I have here is um, again, you know, we are working with time intelligence. We have a calendar table which we will use for a slicer, and um, this calendar table will not have a relationship with your project table because that's not uh, what um, we, we because we want it to be just for the purpose of. Uh, you know, slicer, but not to filter our project table. And uh, then we will use that slicer date range to cal to make our calculation. Let's start writing the measure. Uh, I'm going to call it project uh, projected revenue by selected period. 
Now, first thing what we need to do is we need to see what dates has been selected, right? That is, we want to find out what date has been selected. So we will store those dates in a variable here. So let's say the start date, which will be the minimum of a calendar date. I'm going to make it a little smaller because it's going to be a little longer uh, my year. And then our end date. So that's again max of calendar of end date. So now we know what date has been selected. Uh, what we need to do is to find out uh, um, these number of days we have the, between the days selected. Because if we have selected March, uh, for example, month of March, it means we need to find out how many days are between the dates selected. So those are, will be 31 days. So what we need to do is we need to find out um, selected days. So that will be the date difference between the start date and the end date and the interval will be day because we are, we are working with the days and plus one the reason plus one we are doing is if because if we go first March to 31st March it's going to give us the 30 days as the difference plus one because we need inclusive of everything start and end date and that's why this is 31 days so now we know the dates we selected how many uh, days are uh, we have selected so it, what we need to do here is first we need to find out which product fall within this date range right that's the first condition we need to check um, so what we can do is um, I'm going to uh, create another variable here just for result I'm going to use some X because we will need to iterate over each project to find out which falls within that date range right so what we need to do is we need to filter our project table which is a project and then we need which um, uh, projects fall within the selected date range so what would be that so where the project start date is less than equal to end date and projects end date equal to start date so what will this give us this will give us the projects uh, which has falls within that date range we have selected uh, now this formula has been used many places and well explained i'm not going to explain here what is happening but the goal here is um, we are just finding those projects which are meet the requirement and within the date range we have selected so now we know uh, which projects we 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 are interested in uh, based on the date selected and um, uh, again because we're using SUMX, so it means this will return a table and we need it SUMX will iterate over this table right now the next we need to find out is uh, based on these projects uh, total how many number of uh, total project days are right so total we're going to store it in a variable total project dates sorry so whatever the projects met the criteria based on the date selection so we're going to calculate their um, total days that will be project start date similar thing what we did uh, to calculate uh, the number of days selected so project end date so day plus one why are we doing this because we need to calculate per day revenue right so now let's say for the january 1st as uh, for the project number one whatever the number of days turns out to be that is stored in this total project days now we we need to do is revenue per day right and that's the second uh, calculation we need to do so whatever the total project revenue is project amount and we're going to divide it by total project days so that is like now we know each project uh, per day revenue right if project is a 10 days long and uh, uh, total project amount divided by 10 if project is a 100 days long total project amount divided by 100 so that is now we have a per day revenue for each project now once we have this now we what we need to do is um, uh, we calculate the per day revenue and we know what number of days user has selected we also know which projects are between those date range what we need to do is uh, 
first we need to make sure that the number of days we have selected um, is less than the total project days right because if the project is only 10 days and user has selected a three months that those are 90 days so we our maximum revenue can be only for those 10 days because that's what the how long the project is so what we need to do is um, total revenue days so revenue days so what will be that that will be minimum between revenue total project days how many long how long the project is and whatever the selected days is if project date is 10 days and the selected days is a 30 days so we maximum we want the minimum so that's a 10 uh, it will return only 10 if the project is a 30 days and the user has selected only 10 days so then the minimum uh, will be 10 days because we just want to have the revenue of the selected dates right and that's what we want to see and um, so now this is what our uh, this is so we have two uh, ingredient to calculate the revenue so number of days for which we want to uh, calculate the revenue based on the selected by the user and the, we also know the revenue per day so multiplying these two will give us the total revenue and now what we need to do is return here so revenue days multiply with the revenue per day and that will be a sum x so basically sum x is gonna sum this calculation right and now we will return here a result okay so we have now this my year that which we created project revenue by selected period so we are seeing it um because the date i have selected is the full date year of 2023 and uh, so we are getting a correct value right so this is giving us because all these projects uh, fits within this date range we have selected and uh, we are getting the full revenue so it's not going um, over even we have selected full year which is 365 days but we are getting the exact amount of the project amount um, uh, for our projected revenue which which, uh, which which works perfectly fine but let's try to reduce the uh, dates here and see what happens so if i go let's say um, i just selected a 10 a uh, first january to 21st of january uh, maybe we should do some uh, smaller period 10 of january easy to calculate so we have 10 days of revenue so let's see what we are getting so the second one uh, uh, we are not getting any revenue the reason behind that is because it's starting in february so it doesn't fit into the selection we have done and uh, for the first one for the 10 days the revenue is 1408 dollar and for this one the revenue is um uh 1695 let's change this date range from uh, 10th of february Uh, actually let's go 20th of to February sorry okay 10th of February and let's go here and go of 1st of February so we are now calculating one first from to 12 so this numbers the uh, data looks correct to me and uh, let's say this project finishes on February 22 28 2023 and if i go in march for example i'm selecting something march 16 and uh, starting from march 1st what we expected the third project will not be included in this okay first of march Here you go. So now, first March to sixteenth of March. So the first one does fit into this one, and we have a whatever the revenue turned out to be based on number of days. The third one does not include it because it completed on February twenty eighth, and our selection is first of March twenty twenty three to sixteenth of March twenty twenty three. So basically, um, it does this project does not fit into the selection. Um, Similarly, if, if whatever the date range I will select, it will work accordingly. And uh, and 
I can also visualize this by month now as well. I don't have to be visualized it by the project. Let's say if I take, um, you know, the project a, 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 a month from my date dimension and also the this projected revenue, it will give me what the projected revenue look like. Let's take a look that way as well. Okay, here I have another page where I have a month from my calendar table and total project time amount is of course 60,000 and projected revenue by selected period is, is because right now it's only March is selected. So if I go um, select the full period, what you see is from those projects, the January is 9,620, the revenue February is this much, March is this much, April is this, whatever, it's getting distributed. End of the day, the total project value will show 60,000. Sum of project amount is getting repeated because it does not make any sense to be have it here. Uh, the reasoning behind that is why we are getting the repeated value because if you remember, calendar dimension does not have any relationship with the project um, table. So that's why it is getting repeated. So this particular um, measure, sum of project amount does not make sense here. Uh, because it is only only makes sense uh, at um, at the project level. So now here you can see uh, how the distribution uh, look like for those sixty thousand dollar project over the period. But if I select a smaller period here, uh, let's say if I take uh, only smaller uh, duration, so I can now see uh, between this duration. How does uh, uh, what my revenue distribution is going to look like? Of course, if we have another table visual here by project, and if we click on a project, it will uh, automatically, um, you know, um, cross filter this table as well. And from this table, we can auto automatically filter the project table visual as well. Um, let me know what do you guys think about this video. Uh, this is a very common question where we have a start and end date and some sort of a revenue and then uh, over any other calculation you want to uh, perform, uh, you can easily use this technique to do that. Um, again, at the start of the video, I mentioned there is a question uh, which I want to post it for you guys uh, to, to solve and uh, do share your solution in the comment of this video. And the question is, uh, uh, in this calculation, when we did the project revenue, what we uh, did is we took the date difference of the selected days, uh, start date and end date, uh, whatever the turned out. So it does include weekends as well. Now the question for you is, if I really want to exclude the weekends, uh, how you will perform that? Let's say if I've selected January, uh, only and it has a, a, a four weeks and eight days come out. So actually selection is 22 days. And uh, so we need to in, perform that in the selected days. And also we need to perform that into the total project days. So in, exclude uh, weekends, uh, as keeping it simple, Saturday and Sundays. And how you will, what changes you will do in this measure. And the second thing, if you really want to go to the next level, um, uh, how about if you want to exclude the holidays as well, assume there is a table for holidays or holidays are marked in a calendar table and you also want to exclude your holidays so that you really want to calculate the working days. What changes you will do? Um, do share your, um, you know, um, solution and your tax expression in the comment. And uh, uh, this will help you to, uh, you know, have your hands uh, dirty with this particular <laughs> DAX formula uh, along with the, you will learn some new techniques from here as well. Um, just to a hint, uh, you can use a network days DAX function to make that happen. Anyhow, um, I, I'm looking forward for your uh, DAX expression. Uh, until next video, have a great day and make sure to hit the subscribe button and bell icon so that you get informed when the new videos come out. Until next video, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Cheers.